In this video, we're going to talk about gravity. What is gravity? Gravity is a force that brings matter together. Now, you know that if you place, let's say, a rock above the ground, you know that rock is going to fall towards the ground. And the reason for that is gravity. Gravity causes objects to fall. Now, gravity is a force, and that force brings the rock down towards the Earth. But what you may not have known is that the Earth actually accelerates towards the rock. However, because the mass of the Earth is so much more greater than the rock, it doesn't appear that the Earth is moving. Its acceleration is insignificant. Because the rock's mass is so small, it has a much larger acceleration. And the rock, it accelerates towards the ground at this rate, 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is known as gravitational acceleration. This value tells us the rate at which the speed of the rock changes every second. So every second, the velocity of the rock, it changes by 9.8 meters per second. So it's decreasing by 9.8 meters per second since it's going down in the negative y direction. Now let's talk more about gravity. Let's say this is the Earth. And let's say this is the moon. Gravity brings matter together. The Earth feels a force that accelerates it towards the moon, and the moon feels an equal but opposite force that pulls it towards the Earth. And so these forces, they have the same magnitude. And to calculate this force, it's equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the moon divided by the distance between their centers which is r so r is the distance between the center of the earth and the center of the moon and so using that equation you can calculate the gravitational force between the earth and the moon this equation is known as the universal law of gravitation so as you can see the force of gravity is proportional to the masses of the two objects. For instance, let's say if you have a rock and if you have, let's say, a book. The force of gravity between these two objects is not noticeable. The rock is not going to slide towards the book. And the reason for that is because their masses are so small. For gravity to be significant, you need masses on a planetary scale. You need huge masses for it to be important. As you increase the mass of a planet, the gravitational force that it exerts on other planets increases. The second factor is distance. Notice that the distance is on the bottom of the equation. So as you increase the distance between a planet and another planet, the gravitational forces acting on those planets decreases. So the moon has a greater effect on planet Earth compared to Pluto because Pluto is so far away. So gravity plays a role on objects that are nearby. Objects that are far away, gravity weakens greatly. In fact, as you double the distance between two planets, the gravitational force reduces by a factor of four. If you double one of the masses of the planets, the gravitational force will double. Now, it turns out that the gravitational force is the same as the weight force. And let me illustrate that. So let's say this is the Earth. And let's say we have a 20 kilogram block resting on the Earth. Now, what is the weight force of that 20 kilogram block? The weight force is simply the mass times the gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be the mass of the block, which is 20 kilograms, times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So 20 times 9.8, that gives us a weight force of 196 newtons. 
Now let's see if we can get the same answer using the universal law of gravitation formula. So the formula was F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Now G is the universal gravitation constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and it's newtons times square meters divided by square kilograms. Now the mass of the Earth, that's 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The mass of the block, M2, is 20 kilograms. And the distance between the center of the Earth and the surface of the Earth, because the block is on a surface, that's the radius of the Earth, which you can call RE. And you can look up this value in a textbook. It's 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we need to square it. So go ahead and type these numbers into your scientific device. All right, give me a few seconds. I'm almost done. So the answer that I got is 195.98 newtons. So as you can see, the gravitational force or the weight force is about 196 newtons. Now, of course, these numbers that I'm using are rounded figures. So that's why it's not exactly the same, but it should be the same. So this is approximately 196 newtons. So the weight force and gravity, or the gravitational force, they're identical. Now, how do we get this number? How do we calculate the gravitational acceleration? Well, let's look at these two equations. The weight force is mg, and the force of gravity is g m1 m2 over r squared. Now, we said that these two, they're the same, which means that we can set these two portions of the equation equal to each other. So let's do that. G m1 over m2, I mean times m2 over r squared. Let's set it equal to mg. Now, all we need to do is cancel one of the masses, particularly, it really doesn't matter which mass you cancel, m1 or m2. So the gravitational acceleration of a planet is the gravitational constant times the mass of the planet over r squared. So let's calculate it for the Earth. So we're going to use the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the Earth, we said it's 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the radius of the Earth is this number again in meters. So go ahead and type that in. So you should get 9.799 meters per second squared, which you can round at to 9.8 meters per second squared. And so this formula helps us to calculate the gravitational acceleration of any planet. It could be a moon, it could be a planet, it could be a star like the sun. You can use this to calculate the gravitational acceleration of any object. Now that's basically it for this video. That's all I got. So if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click on that notification bell. In addition, for those of you who want more math problems on gravity and the universal law of gravitation, I have another video that have a lot of problems that you can work on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a few links in the description section of this video that will point you towards uh, more problems like finding the gravitational force, finding the distance between planets, and um, stuff like that. You'll, you'll see it. And not only that, I'm going to have some other topics related to gravity, like how to find the speed of a, a satellite in orbit, and uh, some other problems on centripetal force, and uh, Kepler's third laws, and 
just other topics that relates to gravity, space, and planets, and things like that. So when you get a chance, feel free to check out those links below. And whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, I do have other topics besides physics. I do have a playlist on physics. You can check out my channel if you want more info on that. I have a playlist on chemistry, algebra, trig, geometry, calculus, precalculus. So basically, the common topics that you encounter in school, I have a playlist on that uh, stuff if you need help in that. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.